let's say a very good morning to Talk TV's international editor, Isabel Oakshaw. Isabel, how are you doing? Morning. Well, I can tell you're in a good mood because of the Harry and Meghan thing. Well, I've got a bit of a spring in my step. I mean, much as I don't actually believe this particular late, latest statement, it does fill me with joy that we'll never hear from them ever again, even if I can only hold on to that for sort of, you know, two days. I, mean, I thought that both of them had book deals. I mean, Harry's book deal was supposed to be a two-parter, was it mm. not? Um, and I had understood that she also had a book coming out. Yeah. So... If those have been cancelled, it shows just how stung they've been by the global backlash against their global scale whinge fest. <laughs> well, I think it's probably true to say that they've got nothing left to say. I think we've all talked about it endlessly, haven't we, on various shows on Talk TV, that they, there can't be anything left for him to write about, surely to God. I mean, all of the revelations that we found out in Spare that we didn't want, um, I can't imagine that there's anything that he didn't put in there. And the same goes oh, for her. No, oh, I don't know. I think there's plenty more that they could say, I mean, he hasn't yet written about the funeral. As far as we know, he didn't arrive with a secret camera and a recording device. But, I mean, who <laughs> knows? I, I mean, maybe more. maybe you should apply to see whether he wants to share his WhatsApp messages with you and see what you can make of those. Now, that is a very, very fine idea. <laughs> I mean, we haven't had Car Harry and Meghan the lockdown experience. No, have the lockdown years. Um, Exactly that. So I think there's I think there's so many more things. And then we could have Megan's parenting book, you know, how to be a, a really woke parent yeah. in, in California or wherever it is they are by, by then. Um, I can see plenty, plenty more scope. Yeah, I'm sure that we can. We're going to talk to Andrew Levin a bit more about it later on today, but I'm, I wanted to get your reaction to it first of all. Let's talk about um, matters closer to home for the moment. Boris Johnson... I think in a rather surprise move yesterday, decided to give over all of the WhatsApp messages, more or less revealing that it wasn't he who was trying to stop them from being given to the COVID inquiry. It was actually the Cabinet Office. I thought that was a very, very interesting move by Boris Johnson. Uh, the messages that I've seen between Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock and between Boris Johnson and, and his key advisers uh, are not perhaps as um, embarrassing and kind of indiscreet as you might expect. Mm. They broadly paint the picture of somebody who is um, <clears throat> essentially agonising over what is the best thing to do, uh, continually mulling over in his own mind as to whether he's getting the balance right between uh, maintaining fundamental freedoms and uh, protecting people from this dreadful disease. And you can see him under intense pressure uh, from the then health secretary matt hancock uh, backed up by the scientist and, and chief medical officer uh, essentially saying look boris continually you need to look at this latest data these graphs of doom uh, and if we don't act everybody's going to die obviously mm. i'm paraphrasing yeah. here so i am not sure that he really has so much to lose by taking a lead on this one i think what he's done is honorable um unusual to to use that, yes. that word in relation to boris johnson uh, but he is taking a, a stand here and saying look the COVID inquiry needs to see this stuff and make no mistake it really does need to see this stuff mm. This story isn't going away, and I'll tell you why. Because the first phase of the COVID inquiry only covers uh, quite a limited um, number of subjects. For example, it doesn't look at the care home issue at all. That is due to fall at a later in a later module yeah. of very protracted uh, and immensely expensive investigation. So, on the list of WhatsApps that the judge has hitherto asked for is not, for example, WhatsApp messages from the then care home minister, Helen Wakeley, mm. uh, between her and other key figures. If they're going to be looking at care homes later, I think the judge will need to ask for her WhatsApp messages. She's not currently on the list of requests. Right. And so um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because Boris Johnson has always had, one of the things people forget about him, he's always had this capability of surprising people. And he's done it again by suddenly appearing to be the one who's actually more willing to share, to share his private messages than anybody else's. Because there's been an awful lot of sort of bumping of gums, as they used to say in Scotland, uh, by some of these cabinet ministers who are like, oh, well, we don't want to give them anything that's irrelevant. Well, you know, that's not really for you to say, is it? 
Well, it's pretty insulting to the to the judge uh, to suggest that she isn't capable of discerning mm. what's relevant and, and what isn't right. relevant. I mean, undoubtedly, these WhatsApp files will contain an awful lot of um, stuff that you and I and many of our listeners might find wonderful entertainment, mm. very gossipy, lots of kind of um, Westminster stuff and uh, personalities and even some personal stuff that, that doesn't have any place in the COVID inquiry. But actually, I, I've said this before, I suspect that they are the single most valuable source, the single richest insight into what really happened, the real reasons decisions were taken, how they were taken, what drove those decisions, and who was applying what pressures on who. Mm. Uh, you're just not going to get that from the cleansed official civil service records at the time. The truth is that a vast amount of government business on a day-to-day -day basis during the pandemic was conducted by WhatsApp. Mm. Therefore, we need to see them. Yeah, indeed. And you've also raised the spectre um, of the second phone. Um, which, as we know, uh, all untrustworthy people have at least two phones uh, on the basis that one person can't find whatever it is they're doing on the other phone. I mean, I've, I've, I'm obviously missing a trick here. I haven't find it hard enough not to lose one phone, yeah. never mind having two. Um, I didn't actually mean to imply anything particularly untoward mm. in second phone. It is just simply that of the WhatsApp messages I've seen, um, some are described as from Boris Johnson old phone, and, and the second ones are from a different number. Yes. So I was just pointing out that there may well be at least two phones, mm. and there might be more than that. And I'm assuming that he's given all of those messages. I've no reason to believe that he hasn't. I think it's a blinding move by Boris Johnson. He's put Rishi Sunak under mm. extreme ordinary pressure uh, and I do think that the cabinet office who will ultimately uh, answer to Rishi Sunak on this one are going to have to cave this afternoon. Yeah I think they are absolutely going to have to. I seem to remember and I don't know if you if you remember this as well that when Boris became prime minister or certainly when he became leader of the party he had the same phone that he'd always had so everyone that had always contacted him as a journalist or you know for, for a quote on a story when he was somebody slightly less important everybody had to say had the numbers so people were like texting him ringing him all the time and i think that was why he ended up getting the second phone i'm sure that's right it, it does happen um to all prime ministers I seem to remember it with a a previous prime minister we've had so many lately i can't remember which one it was but i do remember that uh, cabinet ministers were getting quite frustrated that they weren't actually able to contact the then prime minister yeah. because they kept changing their phone um, either because they, they just were fed up of being contacted by the cabinet, you know, old fashioned things like cabinet responsibility, uh, perhaps was a little inconvenient, but this does happen. Yes, absolutely right. Stay with us if you would, Isabel. I want to come back and talk to you a little bit about um, Rishi Sunak and his inheritance tax and also Oxford applications at a 20 year low. Um, maybe after what we saw at the Oxford Union the other day, uh, that's not a bad thing, but we'll talk about that plus much else besides uh, Isabel Oakeshott and myself coming next on Talk TV.